नमस्ते एवरीवन लेट अस स्टार्ट बाय ऑब्जर्विंग अ मिनट ऑफ साइलेंस welcome everyone to the guest lecture on the topic the antiquity of indian astronomy archeo astronomical evidence organized by rashtram school of public leadership rishi hoti university indian history as we all know has for a long time been captive of the western indologists they interpreted our texts timelines and progress in scientific and spiritual knowledge with a view of advancing their own colonialist and imperialist agendas naturally their attempt in interpreting sanatana principles with a lens that is western led to a complete rupture a complete misinterpretation of our knowledge systems unfortunately blinded by their individual interests most renowned indian historians followed the same footsteps because of this reason not only india but the whole world remained deprived of the riches that the sanatan siddhanta had to offer but there has always been an undercurrent of resistance to such biased interpretation of indian history and knowledge systems there have been many great thinkers and philosophers like swami vivekananda and sri aurobindo who have countered such propaganda rashtram school of public leadership at rishikesh university is another milestone in the progress of the counter narratives that have sustained under the most unfavorable circumstances and are now blossoming under this new dawn of what we call the indic renaissance and today's lecture is an endeavor in the same direction for this we have with us shri vedveer arya ji who is a civil servant and an officer of the indian defense account service working as integrated financial advisor in the ministry of defense government of india but above all he is a scholar of the highest order after having earned his masters degree in sanskrit from the university of delhi he has done extensive research and brought to light the correct chronology of indian history in accordance with our spiritual and philosophical texts he has authored five books between 2014 and 2020 his first book is titled indian contributors to mathematics and astronomy the glimpse of which we will be able to get in today's session let us give a warm welcome to shri vedveer arya ji with a round of applause I would request Shri Shobhit Mathur ji, Pro Vice Chancellor at Rishi Hot University, to present our guest with the token of honor. I would like to brief the audience with the outline of this event. Shri Vedveer Arya ji will be showing us a documentary, followed by an elaboration on the topic. Then we will have a brief Q and A session. With this, I humbly invite Shri Vedveer Arya ji to begin this session. Namaste and uh, very good morning to all. Uh, I hope uh, all of you. want me to speak in english or hindi whatever uh, the way uh, but first of all i want to ask you how many of you are aware of the astronomy and can you differentiate between astronomy and astrology and why it is uh, so important for us that i'll just uh, give a small briefing 
But before that, uh, how many of you know the, what is our antiquity? Maybe some 200 crores of years? Uh, uh, then anthropologists may ask you that we haven't found any evidence if you go back to 2, 3, 4 lakhs here before. I don't know, we have been evolved from monkey to man. Uh, that another evolution, evolution theory already exists in the academy. But sometimes what happens, you are so much um, in a particular way, you are thinking since last 300, 400 years as per your background. Uh, the academicians not able to find out uh, whether they are thinking in the right direction or not. So before going into this, let us first, since we all know that we traditionally, uh, the present time is uh, dated in Kali Yuga, you know. So we have counted our entire chronology in the terms of Yugas. What is Yuga? Whether, because uh, later uh, our astronomical texts and other texts say that one yuga consisted of 4 lakhs 32,000 years and then a Chetur yuga had almost 43 lakhs 20,000 years if you multiply into the present is 7th Manvantara and I don't know. So that uh, goes into from the date of creation to till date more than almost 200 crores of years that comes. Is it that's the chronology? Because we haven't gave any scientifically proven then uh, what is actually so present historians teach us that 500 bc is the buddha beyond that we don't have any chronology still we may be claiming bharatvada vishwa uh, but we have been taught that the when greeks landed in india they taught us the astronomy even modern uh, the history books tell us that it's actually the greeks they taught us the astronomy it is like that, like Sachin excelled in the cricket, so British Hatha, we taught the cricket. So similar lines, they say Greeks, uh, it's actually Greeks taught us the astronomy. But it's other way around. How that is, before going into what I'll do, I'll just show you the documentary I made it, because what I'm saying that present year, 2022, is the 8,800 year of Surya Siddhant. Because when we have actually started practicing spherical trigonometry, you know the, what it means sine cosine and uh, even a very basic um, uh, even we said that a very elementary spherical trigonometry because that guy uh, mayasura asura is does not mean that some monster or something nothing like us human being it's only devas and asuras were cousins they were fighting for a political power. Then finally, they was defeated the Asuras and they forced them to migrate towards the Persia. The Persians were real migrated Asuras from India. Okay. So when this Surya Siddhanta uh, was written, why I chose this one? Because this gives there a sheet anchor bit. Sheet anchor bit, an astronomical event that occurred only last 16,000 years, uh, only once. But I haven't checked beyond 16,000 years because in a scientific field, a civilizational, a, civil, a flourishing of a civilization is impossible in ice age because the sea level was almost 120 meters below if you go back to 18,000 BC around. Then beyond it is only ice age. Ice age, no rain, nothing, then no agriculture. Without any agri, what kind of a civilization would have been existed? So how the our Indian, all the astronomical references available in Indian text, like in Sanskrit, numerous texts. So uh, first let us see that, uh, please run the video. Zodiac into 28 nakshatras. Later, 
It was Mayasura's Surya Siddhanta which had revolutionized Indian astronomy by introducing astronomical calculations based on spherical trigonometry and ushered in a new era of Siddhantic astronomy. According to Surya Siddhanta, Mayasura observed a rare conjunction of the Sun, Moon and all planets except their nodes and absides were in conjunction in Aries, Mesha on New Moon Day of Chaitra month at the end of the 28th Krita Yoga. Software simulations using the JPL Horizons ephemeris system established that such conjunction on Jaitra Shukla Pratipada occurred only once in the last 16,000 years. That is, on 22nd February 6778 BCE. Evidently, Mayasura had personally observed this conjunction in 6778 BCE and referred to this conjunction as an epoch for his Surya Siddhanta. In the 57th verse of chapter 1, Mishado means that Sun was in the first degree of Aries and Madhyagataha means Sun was in the middle of this conjunction of planets. The simulation shows that Venus, Saturn and Moon were located east of the Sun, whereas Mercury, Mars and Jupiter were located west of the Sun. The Sun was in the first degree of Aries and in the middle of this 26 degree conjunction of all planets. The conjunction perfectly matches with the description given in the Surya Siddhanta. This rare conjunction occurred only once in the last 16,000 years. This establishes that Mayasura wrote Surya Siddhanta in 6778 BCE and the calendar of Surya Siddhanta completes 8,800 years in the year 2022. Prior to 6,777 BCE, a Yuga calendar of 5 years and a Chatur Yuga calendar of 20 years were in vogue. Ancient Indian astronomers revised the time span of a Chatur Yuga from 20 years to 4,800 years and established a Yuga cycle of 1,200 years. Subsequently, the Chatur Yuga cycle was enlarged from 4800 years to 12,000 years with the differential duration of Yugas. Before Mahabharata era, the time span of a Yuga increased from 1200 years to 4,32,000 years and that of a Chatur Yuga cycle increased from 12,000 years to 43,20,000 years with an objective to facilitate accurate calendric and astronomical calculations in whole numbers. It is pertinent to understand the evolutional history of the scheme of nakshatras in Indian astronomy. During the Vedic era, the scheme of 28 nakshatras starting from Mrikashira was introduced around 11,200 BCE. At that time, Winter solstice occurred at Brikashira. When winter solstice shifted to Rohini in 10,200 BCE and Kritika in 9,200 BCE due to precession of equinoxes, the order of nakshatras was also updated. The list of nakshatras starting from Kritika in Athaiva Veda, which indicates that the nakshatra Sukta was written when winter solstice had shifted to Kritika, when winter solstice again shifted to Ashwini around 7322 BCE. Abhijit was finally excluded and the list of 27 nakshatras was formally introduced starting from Ashwini. This major change in the scheme of nakshatras has been considered as the beginning of the 7th Manvantara. Thus, the first Krita Yuga of the 7th Manvantara commenced in 7322 BCE. Bhagavad Puran and Mahabharata's Vanaparva mention that when the first Krita Yuga commenced, a conjunction of Sun, Moon and Jupiter took place in Pushya Nakshatra on the day of Vernal Equinox and New Moon, that is 24th May 7321 BCE. 
using computer simulation of nakshatra latitudinal data by varying ecliptic obliquity, ecliptic node location, and ecliptic sync together with proper motion. Sri Anand Narayanan demonstrated that a match for the Surya Siddhanta latitudinal data was obtained in the time frame 7300 BCE. Therefore, Mayasura was the real father of trigonometry who lived much prior to Greek astronomer Hippicus. Mayasura's Surya Siddhanta was the first stream of knowledge which formulated the concept of seven-day week starting from the epochal day of Surya Siddhanta, that is 22nd February 6778 BCE, Sunday. This tradition of seven-day week was adopted by the entire world subsequently. This fact indicates that a reform in the modern Gregorian calendar is required since the epochal day of Surya Siddhanta, 22nd February 6778 BCE, and the epochal day of the Shatanta era, that is, 1st April 78 CE, have been erroneously calculated as Wednesdays in the Julian calendar. It would also be logical to replace the concept of Julian day with the Surya Siddhanta day, considering the day zero of year zero, starting from 22nd February 6778 BCE. The belief of Western scholars that the ancient Babylonians were the first to introduce the Sabbath, that is Saturday, as holiday, and the Hebrew calendar of Jews adopted it from them, is not founded on facts. It was the ancient Indians who introduced the concept of seven-day week to the world. All cycles of 60 years or 12 years in the world follow the epoch of the Surya Siddhanta cycle of 60 years, that is 6777 BCE. Abul Fazl mentions that an ancient Turkish era calendar, also known as Aikuri, was based on a 12 year cycle. Ancient China also used the 60 year cycle and the first year of the current Chinese cycle was 1984 CE. The Chinese cycle of 60 years and the Turkish cycle of 12 years are based on the Indian epoch of 6777 BCE under influence of Surya Siddhanta. Brahma Siddhanta introduced the cycles of 12 years and 60 years starting from 6773 BCE. Thus, 6773 BCE was the first year in Brahma Siddhanta's 60-year cycle, whereas 6777 BCE was the first year in Surya Siddhanta's 60-year cycle. Presently, we are following the Brahma Siddhanta's 60-year cycle, and 1987 was the first year. Dividends also follow the 60-year cycle of Brahma Siddhanta. Abul Fazal refers to an astrological era of creation that reckoned when all planets were in conjunction in Aries. The Arab astronomer Abu Mashar in his book Kitab al Piranat says that the world was created when the sun, moon and all the five planets gathered at the first degree of Aries. He proposed cycles of events choosing the Yuga cycle of 1,80,000 years similar to Mayasura's Surya Siddhanta. Al Biruni states that Abu Mashar derived his conclusions from Indian sources. Abu Fazal mentions that 1,84,696 years have elapsed starting from the epoch of astrological era of creation. Persian astronomers might have counted roughly 3,000 years from the epoch of the conjunction in Aries to the epoch of Deluge in 3,708 BCE. According to Varah Mehra, a yuga of Mayasura's Surya Siddhanta had a duration of 1,80,000 years, 
It appears that astronomers multiplied 3,000 years by 60 and assumed that 1,80,000 astronomical years had elapsed by the time of deluge in 3,708 BCE. If 3,000 civil years are added to the epoch of the deluge, the Persian epoch of the conjunction in Aries is exactly the conjunction of 6,778 BCE recorded in Surya Siddhanta. Thema Mundi The earliest horoscope in Greek tradition was prepared during the 7th millennium BCE and it has Cancer in the Ascendant, which indicates the vernal equinox at Cancer. Greek scholars Plato and Cicero also mentioned that the great year began at the conjunction of the Sun, Moon and all planets. It indicates that Greek astrology was also influenced by Mayasura's Surya Siddhanta. Accordingly, the epoch of Surya Siddhanta that is, 6778 BCE became an astrological epoch of the creation of the world in Persian and Greek astrology. Mithraism of the West evolved when the Surya Siddhanta was theologically transformed into the worshipping of Mitra, the sun god. Winter solstice became the birthday of Mitra because the new year in the Surya Siddhanta used to commence at winter solstice in the 7th millennium BCE. Certain astronomical observations recorded in post-Surya Siddhanta literature can also be scientifically dated. The historical events of Ramayana occurred around 5677 to 5577 BCE in the last century of the Treta Yuga. Yuddha Kanda of Ramayana indicates the position of a comet in Mula Nakshatra when the Vanar Sena was ready to march towards Lanka. Ramayana describes that a comet touched the root of Mula Nakshatra, which was oppressed by a planet almost at the same time. Venus was in the Mula constellation around 22nd August to 3rd September 5635 BCE and the Helis Comet had also entered Mula Nakshatra on 23rd August 5635 BCE. Thereafter, it gradually faded away. Since Ravana was born in Mula Nakshatra, the appearance of Halley's Comet in Mula Nakshatra in 5635 BCE has been assumed as an astrological indication of the destruction of Rakshasas. This way, the date of Rama Ravana Yuddha can be absolutely fixed in 5635 BCE. The Dwapara Yuga of 2400 years commenced in 5577 BCE and ended in 3176 BCE. And the Mahabharata War took place in 3162 BCE. The available text of Surya Siddhanta was written by Lata Deva in 3101 BCE based on Mayasura's Surya Siddhanta of 6778 BCE. Varah Mehra's Pancha Siddhantika gives a summary of Mayasura's Surya Siddhanta. The main difference between these two Siddhantas is that Mayasura referred to a Yuga of 1,80,000 years of Asura tradition, whereas Lata Deva referred to a Yuga of 4,32,000 years of Deva tradition. Interestingly, Lata Deva observed a rough conjunction of all planets on Chaitra Shukla Pratipada, that is, 18th February 3101 BCE, and compiled the text of Surya Siddhanta. The Surya Siddhanta indicates that the value of the Earth's obliquity to be 24 degrees. The obliquity of Earth's axis was 24 degrees prior to 2900 BCE. Presently, the obliquity is around 23.4 degrees.
Surya Siddhanta measured the latitude of Ujjain to be 24 degrees and established the latitude of Ujjain as prime meridian in 6778 BCE. Because Ujjain is geographically located at the point where the zero meridian of longitude and the Tropic of Cancer intersect. According to Lata Deva, there were two pole stars in 3101 BCE. Thuban is part of Draco constellation and it was the North Pole Star around 3900 to 1800 BCE. Alpha Eridani or Ekarnar was the South Pole Star around 3400 to 2000 BCE. Around 3400 BCE, Ekarnar's declination was 82 degrees 40 minutes placing it within 7.5 degrees of the South Celestial Pole. Puranas give the description of the stars of Shishumara, that is, Draco constellation, and refer to the position of the North Pole star in the tail of Draco constellation. It is well known that Vyasa of Mahabharata era compiled Puranas in the 32nd century BCE. Surya, Taitama, Vashishta, Rubaka, and Paulisha Siddhantas, discussed by Varah Mehra in the Pancha Siddhantika, are Indian Siddhantas. Rubaka Siddhanta's Yuga of 2850 years comprised 1050 Adhimasas and 16,547 Titi Western Indologists speculated that 2850-year cycle of Romaka Siddhanta has 10,40,953 days, which implies a year of 365 days, 5 hours, 55 minutes, 22 seconds, similar to the calculations made by Hippocus and Ptolemy. They also concocted a false theory that the Romaka Siddhanta is based on the tropical system of Greece and Byzantine Rome. Romaka Siddhanta was founded in India much before the evolution of Hellenistic astronomy and the foundation of Rome. It is originally a lunisolar calendar and the yuga of 2850 years is based on Shatapatha Brahman's Yakya Valkya cycle of 95 years. The speculation of the foreign origin of Romaka Siddhanta is falsely founded. The metonic cycle of 90 years is undoubtedly derived from the sub-cycle of 95 years of Romaka Siddhanta. Varaha Mehra refers to a commentary on Romaka Siddhanta written by Lata Deva around 3101 BCE. Paulusha Siddhanta also evolved before the Mahabharata era because Lata Deva wrote a commentary on the Paulusha Siddhanta around 3101 BCE. Paulusha and Surya Siddhantas both give the length of the sidereal year as equal to 365.25875 days. Apparently, Paulusha Siddhanta also followed the lunisolar calendar of Chaitra Shuklati and the Indian cycle of 43,20,000 years. Western scholars said that Paulusha Siddhanta follows Yavana Jataka, but chronologically, Lata Deva's commentary on Paulusha Siddhanta is older than Yavana Jataka. Therefore, Paulusha and Romaka Siddhantas existed in India much before the evolution of Hellenistic astronomy. Prior to the commencement of Siddhantic astronomy in 6778 BCE, Vedas and Brahmanas indicate the beginning of Samvatsara in Sharadritu. Therefore, the reference of Vishwat in Vedic literature must be interpreted as the autumnal equinox. The Ashwini hymns of the seventh Mandala, compiled by Vashishtha Maitravarni, indicate that the Sharad Ritu calendar of Vedic era had commenced when the autumnal equinox occurred in Ashwini Nakshatra around 13,500 BCE. It has been misinterpreted by many scholars 
that Vedanga Jyotisha fixes winter solstice at the beginning of Shravishta Nakshatra and summer solstice at the middle of Ashlesha Nakshatra. This misinterpretation leads to a date around 1400 BCE. The second verse of Rig Veda Jyotisha indicates that Shuji had compiled the Jyotisha of Lagatha Muni. Evidently, Lagatha was not the real author of the available text of Rig Veda Jyotisha. The available Vedanga Jyotisha might have been recompiled around 3500 BCE because it refers to Tapas month of Shishira season as the beginning of New Year. The Mahabharata written in the 32nd century BCE clearly indicates the knowledge of Vedanga Jyotisha. Shuji's statement, Tad Adi Yugam Syad, tells us that the astronomical references to Shravishtha and Ashresha Nakshatras are actually related to the Adi Yuga in the past and not observed during his lifetime. In fact, Lagatha Muni might have referred to autumnal equinox at the beginning of Shravishtha Nakshatra and vernal equinox at the middle of Ashlesha Nakshatra, which is dated around 8300 BCE. In Paitamaha Siddhanta of Vedanga Jyotish calendar, a Saptarshi cycle of 2,700 years was introduced around 6,777 BCE and first 100 years from 6,777 to 6,677 BCE were hypothetically assigned to Ashwini Nakshatra. Every sub-cycle of 100 years was linked to one nakshatra in order to easily remember the number of 100 year cycles elapsed. Accordingly, Saptarshis were in Magha nakshatra around 3177 to 3077 BCE when Mahabharata war took place in 3162 BCE and Yudhishthira ascended the throne. Traditionally, Ancient Kashmir followed this Saptarshi calendar. When the Kashmiri astronomers introduced the Chaitra Shukladi calendar in place of Magha Shukladi calendar, they had to reset the epoch of Saptarshi calendar in 3076 BCE, which came to be known as Laukika Samvat. Thus, Indian civilization has a tradition of 6,700 years of pre siddhantic astronomy from 13,500 BCE to 6,778 BCE and the tradition of 8,800 years of Siddhantic astronomy from 6,778 BCE to till date. Ancient Indians taught the basics of astronomy, trigonometry, spherical trigonometry and calculus to the world and attained the status of Vishwaguru for thousands of years in the past. Let's reclaim our glorious scientific heritage and inspire our scientists to work together with pride and passion so that the glory of our nation could be reawakened in the world. Let us be proud of being the descendants of the greatest and the oldest continuous civilization which laid the strong scientific foundations in ancient times that perhaps led the world in the direction of the modern advanced sciences. So, uh, maybe a little too technical, <laughs> I hope you understood the certain basics because uh, we have a lot of astronomical observations uh, are, have been recorded in our uh, uh, Sanskrit text but what I did, I put them in a chronological order and finding a sheet anchor for the chronology, the sheet anchor is Surya Siddhanta. Akshi tanker is Surya Siddhanta. Why I chose that conjunction as the she tanker because other, generally the astronomical observations are cyclical. 
like a nakshatra means uh, in a 360 degree uh, when you divide it uh, divide the 360 degree by 27 13.2 degrees the moon travels from uh, in a 24 hours at almost 13.2 degrees sometimes faster sometimes slower based on the gravitational weather but generally it takes uh, 27.3 days to cover a 360 degree this is the one moon motion and second is from that uh, uh, new moon to new moon or uh, full moon to full moon that is around 29.5 days something so this is the indians traditionally said that month is related to moon though chandraha masakrit and uh, we followed sun for a, a year but reconciling the both is the challenge because um, 12 months of a lunar cycle would be 354 days where the solar is 365 it's not 365 exactly 0.25 it is not exactly 0.25 so and uh, you know, uh, many must be studied mathematics when you are dealing with the fractions what you will do you take the bigger numbers to get an accuracy this is how our five year yuga during the Rigvedic yuga had only five years but the problem was to achieve an accuracy in it so what we did we expanded the yuga cycle from five years to 1200 years when we switched over five year yuga cycle to 12 year cycle of the Jupiter Jovian cycle Jupiter uh, it takes uh, the 360 degree more the orbital period is 12 years uh, Saturn takes around 30 years. Easily usko bola jata hai Shani se chala hai, jo dhire dhire chalta hai. So the Shani, uh, Saturn takes 29.5 or 7 years, something, almost 30 years. So for reconciling this uh, uh, more uh, accurately, so we need to expand the yoga cycle. Your calendar base has to be bigger. So what we did, we moved from five year and the 20 year Chatur Yuga cycle to 1200 years to 4800 years then again uh, we wanted more accuracy then we moved on to the 12,000 12, year cycle of a Chatur Yuga then came out of a differential duration like agar first Yuga hai to uska 4800 year 4 times bada hona chahiye Kali Yuga se so that concept came you know, just before the Mahabharata era, the Indian astronomer even multiplied that what are the figures with the 360 and expanded up to 4 lakhs 32 years, uh, 32,000 years as the Yuga cycle. This is how we have achieved probably some 2 seconds or some 6 seconds uh, error in the calendar, that's all. Because reconciliation of the solar calendar and lunar calendar was a very big challenge. So mathematically we have achieved that is the accuracy maximum you can achieve that but the this so called Julian calendar followers they have nothing to do with the moon nothing to do with the sun somehow we reconcile the 360 by 0.25 days so this is how the this Roman calendar it's not a Roman finally the Christians adopted it then finally entire world is falling even today if you want to find out any astronomy behind the calendrical calculations you have to go back to the traditional calendar i don't think this calendar will uh, work for any since everybody understands so now we have to tell them the historical timelines in the christian era or in this uh, common era calendar okay so when we work out what actually the chronology has been established last 200 years because before uh, the arrival of the Britisher there was a uh, there was not a single doubting Thomas existed in India they have followed the traditions but okay over a period these astronomical cycles we started believing this is our historical time period. so what we have to understand the evolution of yoga cycle how our yuga calendar because yuga is nothing something it's not any big astronomical event uh, some doomsday will come then only yuga will begin nothing like that it's only a beginning of a new cycle in the calendar that's all it has nothing to do with the any big any event or something like that.
But since the yuga cycles have been enlarged up to the almost uh, gigantic cycles like uh, 43 lakh 20 thousand years and then uh, Manvantara had that, then we started. Theologically said that Brahma had one day and one day will equal to four. Uh, both 4, 000, uh, 400 crores of years is the day and another 400, years, 400 crores of years is the um, night. This is all that. Uh, it happens. When your cosmology is mixed up with the theology, then you keep on. That, that is all more, more mathematical speculations. But when we, when we talk about it, this is the unsolved chronological, modern history, though they don't accept. Uh, the so-called our own uh, Indology, that okay, Vedanga Jyotisha was written around 13,000 and 2,000. But during the Rigvedic period, uh, the Vedanga Jyotisha existed, then what you can, uh, same calendar existed, even Mahabharata used the Vedanga Jyotisha calendar. So everything has to be dated after that, or uh, contemporary to that period, in case you want to date Vedanga Jyotisha around 1300, 200 BC. Then modern historians say roughly 300 AD because they think that Surya Siddhanta was written under the influence of the Greek astronomy. But as per our tradition, Mayasura wrote Surya Siddhanta when Krita Yuga was just about to end in the last one or two years before the Krita Yuga wrote. Now we have to, what is Krita Yuga? Is it has any, he has it. Uh, for the Westerner, it's simply it's on your own speculation or your imagination or your mythology. It, uh, so they rejected uh, you, our entire the basics of our timeline, Yuga timeline as the mythology. Okay, so we had no idea how to tell when was Surya Siddhanta was written. So what I have established, I have shown you the conjunction. Somebody has observed because. I have even linked the same conjunction, references are available in the Persian astronomy as well as the Greek astronomy. Okay, that we will learn. Uh, uh, let us uh, take the all three civilizations together. Uh, Greeks might have observed 7th millennium, then we have, but first we have to establish the timelines of each civilization. But at least a human being has observed that because this can't be back calculated. After back calculation, karna hai, so then Ancient Indians knew the all, all rules of gravity and the modern computers to calculate such an accuracy. Even the JPL horizons, what NASA has developed just 10 or 15 years before such a very accurate algorithm. Because uh, when you go back to the, even today JPL horizon says there may be errors if you go back to 2000 or 3000 BC. Because the time correction, delta T, the time correction is uh, not so simple. You can only, but uh, the how the gravity works in the history of a thousands of years, it's extremely difficult to predict or even uh, simulate. But yes, few hours error, maximum possible. If you go back to, with the JPL horizons, next 20,000 or 30,000 or 50,000 years or so, few hours or maximum one day difference may be possible, not beyond that. Then they say Yavana Jataka was written somewhere, so this is Yavana means Greek's astronomy has been written in Sanskrit, this is what the model. But uh, the Paitamaha, Brahma, Vasishta, these uh, Siddhanta, they existed even before Kali Yuga, as per our tradition. Even Parashara, Siddhanta, Parashara, he was the uh, father of uh, Vyasa of Mahabharata. Then uh, a later Surya Siddhanta, because there are two Surya Siddhanta that exist. One Surya Siddhanta, the details uh, given by Varahamira in his Pancha Siddhantika, that Surya Siddhanta, another Surya Siddhanta, what is available, uh, a full text, is, that is actually written by Latadeva. Albaruni also mentions that. So he mentions a conjunction of 3101 BC. If somebody, somebody is sitting uh, and you are calculating back and uh, establishing an, an astronomical epoch uh, 3000 or 4000 years before your uh, actual lifetime, it has no relevance. Actually, Asuri Siddhanta followers had a, a particular uh, notion that every yuga should commence from a conjunction. Since Mayasura wrote a conjunction there, so Kali Yuga should commence only from the conjunction. This is the reason Lata Deva wrote a Siddhanta. 
he transformed the asura tradition of asura siddhanta into a deva tradition because uh, we were following 3 4 4 lakhs 32000 or even 12000 years in the, with the differential duration where asuras followed without any differential duration every 3000 is the one year even persians had this cycle zoroastrians have a 12000 year cycle with the sub cycles of 3000 years but we had a differential duration this is the only difference later they multiplied 3000 into 60 and went into 180000 what we did we multiplied 1200 by 360 and uh, enlarged the cycle to 4 lakhs that it so devas asuras like uh, don't look at the asuras like some kind of a monsters or uh, any demons or uh, cousin brothers had a like two different parties today the similar way the political power was there so then they was finally uh, asked the asuras to leave this land so they migrated westwards or eastwards so that is that uh, during the Rigvedic era and asuras also had a asura veda if you read the Gopata Brahmana and a uh, few other Brahmana texts, the reference of Asura Veda. This Asura Veda uh, was the Veda uh, of Asuras. The same Asura Veda has been recompiled around 7000 BC by the first Jorastra that came to be known as Avesta. This is the reason why there is so much similarity between Rig Veda, uh, um, the Vedic Sanskrit, and the Avestan Sanskrit. It's actually Asura Sanskrit translate, uh, transformed into a Avestan language. This is how we can scientifically establish the out of India migration. So in a way India was the cradle of civilization because our antiquity goes back to as per my, uh, I just shown you the 13,500 BC, another thousand years before Brahma. Brahma was not a creator. He was the first person known to us in our history. So we name same person uh, after a uh, creator. Then Aryabhata, but the problem is tradition. Varahamira Kalidasa lived in the first century BC, and uh, you know the Vikramaditya and Navaratnas. So in the first century BC, because we are using continuously even till today, 57 BC is the epoch of Vikrama Samvat. Then uh, how do you? Date the Aryabhata because Varahamira refers to Aryabhata and Lata Deva. So they have to be prior to Varahamira. But if he was there in the first century BC, but modern historians date Vara Aryabhata there and even say Aryabhata invented zero. So this is another false narrative. Like he, uh, person who invented zero, still uh, the kind of a mathematics practiced by him, he actually. He started even the um, an elementary calculus. He used that instantaneous motion for calculating the moon, and he was the person behind giving the accurate method to predict an eclipse. Prior to that, we could not do the uh, an, uh, exact predictions. With the Aryabhata, with the Aryabhata rejected that Rahu Ketu ascending moon, descending moon. He says these are only chaya graha. It's only the shadow. So based on that. Even he was the first person, he was actually a radical scientist during that time. He even gave the exact uh, rate of the earth motion, earth is rotating. But other astronomers did not believe that because it, uh, you can physically see it is static, it appears. So they said that no, earth is not rotating. Where the Aryabhata says no, earth is rotating and even the rate given by him is accurate up to even point decimal seven digit. At that accuracy, Aryabhata. So Indians had this uh, ten-digit that uh, decimal system with zero since Vaidhik era. It's not the Aryabhata who invented the zero. So this is our traditional tiling. Pre-Siddhantic astronomy prior to the 20th Krita Yuga, but the end of Krita Yuga, then the uh, how to arrive. So that based on the conjunction, I came up with the um, this. This is the exact date. Now, how the, we have to work out the yuga cycles? Now you have dated an astronomical event which can be dated only once in thousands of years. Then that becomes the very end. Uh, it is, uh, we can get an, an absolute date also. Because we started weekdays also. The, the Surya Siddhanta introduced even the concept of weekday. Why? We have to count the days. 
इन एन एक्यूरेसी कैलेंडर में आप क्या कर सकते हो अगर कुछ घंटे का आप कैसे एडजस्ट करोगे नहीं कर सकते यू हैव टू एड वन डे और डिलीट वन डे आधिक तिथि हो सकती है या क्षय तिथि हो सकती है यू कैंट हैव ए अधिक अवर्स आर डिलीटेड अवर्स इज नॉट पॉसिबल सो दैट्स वाई यू नीडेड ए इंटीजर वैल्यू फॉर इन फॉर गेटिंग ए इंटीजर वैल्यूज विद वेल मैनेजिंग द फ्रैक्शन to take the bigger numbers this is how yoga lengths got increased so that's why we have to differentiate between historical timeline as well as the this astronomical yoga cycles this is what ali anil narayanan he worked out on a, in a totally different methodology and he said a particular data has been taken uh, that is the 7300 bc this what i'm saying this is actually beginning of when we A, um, the list of nakshatra starting from ashwini means starting from the zero degree of mesha rashi or zero of aries prior to that what we we every thousand years a sun due to precession i don't know whether how long how many of you understand the precession what happened the uh, earth and sun both are moving in a um uh, an elliptical moon what happens a particular degree in a uh, because again the sun will come to the same mesha rashi or aries but uh, there is a difference between uh, when earth uh, position as well as the uh, when the sun enters into the aries so the difference is uh, gradually accumulates and in a thousand years the sun actually precedes another uh, nakshatra 13.2 degrees so what happens so that's why एक पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट पे जब अर्थ एंड मून का जो आपने आपने एक पोजीशन लिया इफ बोथ हैव टू बीट एट द सेम प्लेस दे हैव टू वेट फॉर अनदर 26000 इयर्स बिकॉज़ फिर दोबारा ऑफ द 360 डिग्री वो एक साइकिल है वो पूरा करके फिर वहां पे सो दिस इज द प्रोसेशन साइकिल इज अराउंड 26000 वी कैन से द रफली द प्रोसेशन इज वन नक्षत्र देवताओं ने जो कि एक हजार वर्षो तक यज्ञ किया नई मिशारण्य में इट इज एक्चुअली इंडियन ऋषिज ऑब्जर्व एस्ट्रो कंटिन्यूस मल्टी जनरेशनल एस्ट्रोनॉमिकल ऑब्जर्वेशन एंड दे हैव रिकॉर्डेड द डेटा थाउजेंड इयर्स एंड दट टू प्लेस लेवन थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड टू टेन थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड बी सी ड्यूरिंग दैट so this is how meticul when they initially they set the first nakshatra is starting from mrigashira that's why it was called agrayana means in the beginning of the list and the ayana because that time winter solstice used to occur at mrigashira so this is the first scheme of 28 nakshatra that have been introduced but after 1000 years uh, the rishis observed that it is again shifted to rohini it was the mrigashira now rohini so this was uh, why prajapati because they named mrigashira as prajapati rest 27 as daughters of daksha so they married to uh, moon this is the, uh, a mythological name but yes certainly chandra was a human being he married to the daughters of daksha but it is since they made 27 nakshatra all have been taken as the daughters of daksha now the question is why prajapati is now means an year a beginning of the year is in the rohini then they modified the list and started again revised the list starting from rohini uske baad another 1000 years baad nakshatra kalpa sukta patharva veda gave the list of kritika so this is how we can uh, come out of the chronology how the our uh, uh, the calendrical evolution and our chronology both can converge so these are the evidences how we can put a chronological order because uh, whenever we are claiming any antiquity we have to give the civilizational continuity either you have a genealogical chronological history you have if there are certain gaps we can explain with this our calendrical continuity we have used a calendar in rigvedic era uh, i don't know how many have read rigvedic mantra everywhere we always jivema sharada shatam this every veda brahmana we talk about sharad ritu as the beginning of the year this is actually autumnal equinox the sharad ritu the 
autumn season. The beginning starts with that equinox. The Sharad Ritu calendar began around 13,500 BC. Uh, when uh, Ashwini was, this is the reason all Rigvedic Ashwini Suktas, uh, the Vasishta, he was the author of the Ashwini Suktas. So this is 13,500 BC. So from there onwards, we have a, a continuous yoga calendar and that up to uh, uh, beginning of this uh, Surya Siddhanta. After that, we follow 12 year cycle, that Jupiter cycle. Jupiter cycle was not the Vedic tradition. This is only under the influence of that's why the difference between because planetary astronomy was not part of calendrical astronomy during the Vedic era. This became part of calendar, uh, our, um, calendar uh, from starting from the Surya Siddhanta. So this I have already gave you the we have always followed 24 degrees. This is another evidence how because our obliquity is also not the same. It varies. Whether you heard of that Milosevic cycle, 40,000 years of a cycle, it is actually Earth obliquity varies 24.5 to 22.5. Today it is 23.4. It's not constant every day. But it moves from 24.5 to 22.5, and again it moves from 22.5 to 24.5. And it takes more than 40,000 years or 41,000 years cycle. So if you see the 6778 BC to if you come down to 2800 BC, it was 24 degree. Uske baad, today almost 23.3 or 23.4. So our all astronomers very meticulously observed and fixed only 24 degrees. So that also is an evidence that yes, this is part of our ancient astronomy, not just uh, rough for a vague calculation of 24 degrees. In two versions of Surya Siddhanta I have explained. One is the Asura tradition that what um, Maya Asura, he came up with the 3000 years, uh, 12,000 years after the 6, 6, 7, 7, 8 BC, our yuga cycle became 12,000 years. It has a four, side, four yugas. Asuras followed like every yuga had 3000 years. Where we said that no, a yuga must have a differential duration. First yuga will have a four times, second three times twelve. This is this was the difference. This is the deva tradition. Later, uh, the multiplication uh, they multiplied with the sixty. That's why they went into one lakh, eighty to seven lakh, twenty thousand years. Where uh, our chaturyuga became forty three lakh, twenty thousand years. So this is the conjunction. Lata deva surya siddhanta. And uh, it's not a perfect conjunction because a conjunction, uh, any conjunction uh, to be accepted only within 30 degrees because if you divide 360 into 12, one Rashi will have a 30 degrees. So conjunction must happen within 30 degrees or below. Here it is 41 degrees uh, conjunction, so it won't qualify as a conjunction since he actually looking for a conjunctions to begin because in the 32nd century BC there was already a buzz that Kali Yuga has already begun because there are many other Siddhanta like Paitama Siddhanta they are just following 100 year cycles so that 100 year cycle ended 3176 BC so they already Kali Yuga has commenced that's why Mahabharata following that cycle so Mahabharata says Kali Yuga already began even uh, Aryabhatta says Bharata Purvam the Kali Yuga began before the Mahabharata era some Siddhanta following the 60 year cycle, the unka ye thaki, 60 year cycle, the first year say start hona chai, where uh, this Lata Deva says uh, it has no meaning, every yuga must commence from the conjunction. So he started even from Vijaya Samvatsar, uh, it was not a first year of the 60 year cycle. But this we never accepted. Around 2nd century BC onwards, when we realized that Surya Siddhanta is very perfect methodology. Then we started following 3101 as the Kali Yuga. This is the reason our all inscriptions dated in Kali Yuga are dated only in the last 2000 years, not before that. This is the reason they said that you have just uh, reinvented or you just speculated your 3101, it is not an historic epoch. And another, this Surya Siddhanta, this Lata Deva is referring to two pole stars. Okay? Presently, we are on Polaris is the pole star that is part of your um, uh, another 
uh, a constellation in this pocket. But you are uh, the reference to in a uh, in a Surya Siddhanta and Purana, they are referring to Thuban as the North Pole star. Thuban was the pole star only 38, 3800 BC, 3900 BC to 1800 BC. So after 1800 BC, Thuban was not at all North Pole star. And this uh, Alpha Eridani or Akarna, Akarna it is uh, also almost the uh, same period. So he is referring to two pole stars. There was a pole star in the uh, north as well as in the south. And this is only possible during this period. So somebody lived after that, he can't observe the two pole stars. So this observation also and the conjunction what he has observed in 3101. So that is that a person lived during that time, he is actually referring to these, these astronomical events. It's not any back calculation or just speculations. The Western astronomy that Yavana Jataka clearly mentioning that he, he got this knowledge from the Surya. Yavaneshwara got this knowledge and Vridha Yavana Jataka clearly mentioning Maya. So it is obvious that the so-called Hellenistic astronomy is influenced by Surya Siddhanta, not by Savasa. Uh, Hellenistic astronomy, because the same texts are giving this in the Greek astronomers. What happened during the? Um, it's actually the Greeks landed in India even prior to Alexander. When Alexander invaded Afghanistan and the Turkish in that area. Already Greek colonies existed. The Greeks came when Hercule, uh, Her uh, Hercules, he invaded up to almost in Kabul River and he appointed some governors there. And these uh, Indo Greeks, they slowly adopted to the local language and they learned Sanskrit. This is how they translated their astronomical text. Into that's why that um, Mina Raja and Yavana Jataka was Spojit uh, Bhaja. He uh, wrote or uh, translated the Greek text into a Sanskrit. And these two uh, Greek texts are referring to the uh, sun or a Maya, the, the origin of their astronomy. So even this already has spoken. Abul Fazal also refers to a conjunction. And he gives a particular, but that what we what we need to do 3700 BC se So what we need to do, we have to take only the calendrical years, not the astronomical year. He has actually taking one lakh eighty thousand years. One lakh eighty thousand years only. Actually, they followed that sixty as a unit. Asura tradition followed sixty as a unit. So they multiplied three thousand into sixty. That's why the cycle became one lakh eighty thousand years. So this is how. The Persian, how we can calculate the, I am just, uh, how this matches to the same conjunction what we have dated, the Maya Sura Suri Siddhanta. So, this is how the, our uh, chronology of Indian astronomy, the pre Siddhantic astronomy, it goes beyond 6777 BC. After that, means last 8800 years, we have been following the Siddhantic astronomy means with the planetary, even astrology also evolved. And astrology is nothing any science, uh, I, can, if any others may believe in it. It's actually the repeated occurrences we thought that in case such astronomical cycle repeats, same events may occur again. So, this is how the astrology evolved. And now, what was the Yuga? So, Yugasya Pancha Varshasya. So, pre Siddhantic astronomy, uh, what was the yuga? 5 year yuga and uh, Chatur yuga had 20 years. That I will just tell you. This is the Rigveda. Dirghatama Mamateyo Jujurvan Dashami Yuge. A Krishi the Dirghatama. He became old, means he probably hair, unke baal safed ho gaye the. Thus, uh, thus may you. Yuga, if you take 4 lakh 32, then 10 yugas may be almost 40 lakh years. It was not like actually a yuga 5, 50 years. At the age of 50, kisi ke baal it's not anything unnatural. That is what actually has been mentioned. 
the yuga references even the taitriya samhita as the krita treta dwapara and the, there is a word askanda they have used for the kali and the atharva veda also has a reference to kali krita uh, treta dwapara so what i am uh, just uh, mentioning here the chatur yuga calendar existed during the vaidik yuga in the vaidik period vajasani samhita uh, even uh, i am not going into details so what kind of a yuga concept existed during the vaidik period so five year yuga so 366 days they generally what we used to do uh, indians used to round it off to the uh, one uh, number uh, because 360 by 25 so we have taken around 366 later uh, addition or deletion so this that was the follow uh, that kind of uh, mathematics in the calendar So 60 solar month or 60 lunar months. So now the problem was every two and a half years you are going to insert one additional lunar month. So by the time uh, you complete 20 years, you have intercalated eight months, two lunar months in a cycle of five years, two into four, eight eight months. But actually, you are adding up another 15 days extra in this calendar. So what they did in the 20th year means uh, in the last cycle of five years, four cycles, five years, first cycle, five years, second cycle, for third cycle. Every all first three cycle had two months intercalation. But in the fourth cycle, what they did? They first first month they have intercalated after two and a half years one month. But in the fifth year, they have intercalated only half month. So that's why Ardha Masa intercalations have been mentioned in all Vedic texts. But due to what happens, you have started from new moon a calendar. But when Chetur Yuga you complete, you end up with the Purnimanta. Then Purnimanta calendar starts, and after 20 years, it becomes again Amanta. This is how they reconcile the in a two cycle of Chetur Yuga a calendar. So this, but this was very, um, user friendly nature. This methodology, but they wanted for a user friendly calendar. So then, when Surya Siddhanta came, when we said that no, this kind of a random intercalation just at the end of two and a half years after may not correct. So we followed the Jupiter cycle for intercalation. That actually is a big change in your. That's why the Siddhanta astronomy, pre Siddhanta astronomy. So we abandoned using this Ardha Masa, and we have also abandoned 28 nakshatras because if you divide 360 uh, uh, in this 28, you will get fractions. But you can perfectly divide uh, the 360 by this uh, 27 nakshatra. It is exactly 13 point. So that's why even we move towards the 27 nakshatra system. Then we have. Uh, Actually, get rid of this Ardha Masa intercalations and Amanta to Purni Manta. These are all. This is how. This is the table. What I say. This is our historical time. Prior to six triple seven BC, we have to calculate only five years or twenty years cycle, not lakhs of years or thousands of years. After that, we use twelve hundred years. So that's why Treta Yuga had only twelve hundred years. Six seven seven triple seven BCE to five five seven seven BCE was the Treta Yuga, because Surya Siddhanta so Maya Sura wrote at the end of Treta Yuga. It means Treta Yuga begin. So Treta Yuga begin six thousand seven hundred and seventy seven BCE. After two hundred years, Treta Yuga ended. Now we can get the Ramayana dating. The last century of the Treta Yuga was the Ramayana period. So five six seven seven to five five seven seven is the Ramayana period. After that, 2400 years, because now yoga cycle has been enhanced to 12,000 years. So this is the reason Dwapar Yuga had 2400 years. So then finally Kali Yuga, because now in a pre-Mahabharata astronomical timeline, the Kali Yuga should uh, would have had only 1200 years, but still Kali Yuga continuing because. Yuga cycle has been ended after four lakhs thirty-two years, thirty-two thousand years. This is the reason, even though five thousand, almost five thousand, 
200 years have been elapsed, but still Kali Yuga is continuing. So this is the our, how many yugas have been elapsed and everything if you add up mathematically. Almost uh, if you add 9185 years it goes to around 16,000 BCE. Okay. So this is the reason why I have only used up to 16,000 BC only in calculating the, any astronomical event, not, not going beyond that. This is how the, uh, this I have already explained. Then the, this is the Yuga chronology because in the 7th Manvantara, that began from the Ashwini. So what we have to do, 5 year and 20 year Yuga up to 6, 7, 7, 8 BC because as per our tradition, this is the 28th Chetur Yuga and our Kali Yuga is 28th. That also you have to establish how this is the 28th. So what you have to do, because prior to 6777 BC, only 5 years, 20 years, so 27 Yugas had only 20 into, uh, sorry, 20 into 27, that is the 540 years. Okay, the 20th Krita Yuga had only 5 years, but after that our Treta Yuga became 1200 years, then Dwapar Yuga became uh, 2400 years, then the Kali Yuga is still continuing. Okay, but Kali Yuga had a different different uh, epochs and a different different Siddhantas. It's only because somebody is following a 100 year cycle, he can't start Kali Yuga in the midway. And a person who is following 60 year cycle, he can't start Yuga in midway. A person who is following conjunction, he says, no, conjunction is more important, I don't have any, I don't consider your cycles. So these are the differences, that's why the, why we say that Mahabharata says that Kali Yuga already commenced and Bhagavata Purana says when Sri Krishna died, that time only Kali Yuga will begin. So because the Bhagavata Purana was following a, a 60 year cycle, the Prabhava Samvatsara started 3126 BC. Mahabharata was following 100 year cycle, so he said already begin. So that's why we can reconcile the both statements. We can't say that both are just somebody's speculations or uh, contradictory statements. So if we go back to the, I say this is the scientific evidence that sea level rise. If you see that ma, ma, uh, this uh, um, ma, uh, chart. Uh, up to 18,000 BCE, sea level was constant and it started slowly rising. Now, I, uh, all of you might have heard about Holocene when the ice started melting, but generally for Europeans it may be 11,000 or 10,000 BCE. But in India, as per my understanding, the Holocene should start from whenever southwest monsoons became regular. And uh, we are more closer to the, uh, the equator. So suddenly, the, our Holocene can't be the same what the Europeans have, uh, have actually experienced during that. If you see the sea level rise also, exactly around 16,000 BC around, or that time it started. And the first that pulse means a sudden rise of sea rise took place somewhere 12,700 BC you two. Level and second pulse and actually modern historians take the Holocene during the second pulse because they think that no civilization existed. Actually, that that uh, even today there is hardly any civilization has been dated before 4000 BC because that Christian mindset are a biblical mindset because Bible said that nothing existed prior to 4000 BC. Since Whenever the this um, the monsoons become regular, the agrarian society, the agriculture starts evolving. Once agriculture uh, an agrarian society needs a calendar from uh, Varsha Ritu to so Varsha Ritu. So this is the reason why we call a year as a Varsh, because our tradition, because we followed from Varsha Ritu to Varsha Ritu. That was the first calendar that Brahma introduced. Uh, Later we shifted to the Sharad Ritu calendar during the, when we uh, reached an advanced level of civilization. So this is the work that Dhanishtha this Tada Kalo Brahmana Parikalpita. So that summer solstice used to occur at Dhanishtha around 14,500 BC. 
So this is how I have arrived the chronology starting from 14,500. So we have a, a continuous chronological history starting from 14,500 means we have an antiquity of almost 16,500 years from now. And Vishwamitra, he is his one very, he actually reset the nakshatra starting from Shravana because he lived 1000 years later, the first Vishwamitra, there are many Vishwamitras, the first Vishwamitra lived 1000 years later, he was the person who was the father of Shakuntala and Shakuntala married Dushyanta and they had a son Bharata and why we are all Bharatiya, okay. So the Bharata, he was an historic person and his reference is there in Rig Veda. Actually he or his son wrote a one or two mantras in Rig Veda. And uh, Dirghatama Mamateya, he was actually the person who performed the rituals during his coronation. So that goes back to the first Vishwamitra. He was originally Kshatriya, became a Rishi. So Pratishravana Purvani Nakshatrani Sasabja. He actually the summer solstice calendar he was following because he was the first person who observed the Sampatas, means the precession. So this has been mentioned in Gopata Brahmana. And Ramayana refers that after thousand years, Purne Varsha Sahasreta Brahma Loka Pitamaha Abravim Abhram Vakyam Vishwamitram Tapodana. There was a, a difference of thousand years between Brahma and Vishwamitra. And this is the timeline of the Brahma and Vishwamitra based on the difference and the uh, uh, So, okay, these are the even the Asuras followed the spring uh, calendar because it is like today, like the Jews followed something, then the Muslims follow totally differently. So similarly, they, were the, uh, they followed the calendar from Vasanta, we followed from the Sharad. So this is how the, this is all the evolution of how our calendar, initially we followed 7 or 8 Rashis and 4 and a half Nakshatras into 1 Rashis. Later we, it is around beginning of the 11,200 BCE, 12 Rashis and uh, the 28 Nakshatras. So this is how we, if we can put the Brihaspati, Brahma and Vishwamitra. Then comes to the Sharadritu calendar, Vasishtha, he observed the autumnal equinox at Aries. Then Asura tradition followed Libra. Then Raivatamanu, when uh, the autumnal equinox shifted from Ashwini to Revati. And Daksha Prajapati in this 28, this is how the winter solstice uh, has been taken for finalizing the 28 nakshatras, the first list of nakshatras. So, ye, ye, daksha yagye, they follow, uh, they actually observed a comet. So, that also I have established through the simulations the movement of a particular, uh, when uh, exactly we can date the daksha yagya. So, that is around 11,218 BC. Then, there are actually two different Krishna, the same, the Krishna and the Mahabharata Krishna. This is, uh, there is a reference in uh, Harivansha Purana, a particular comet has actually travelled almost 13 nakshatras, cross 13 nakshatras. So that can be established around uh, 25th May is the date of birth and then the 8th September 1100, almost 11,143 BC. And this is the what I have mentioned, Rohini and uh, Ashwabhrigashira to Rohini, Rohini to Kirtika. This is the list what we have finalized and uh, this list also having that in this already that video is covered, this one. Based on this uh, astronomy we can work out this is the timeline of our problem. We can say some proto-Vedic period because uh, when Brahma he started uh, actually he linked the, our calendar with the astronomy. He first observed the occurrence of summer solstice in the Dhanishtha. So he was the person, uh, a scientific studies. He introduced the scientific studies. So that's why he linked the astronomical observations with the calendar. 
So that's why our entire knowledge tradition starts from the Brahma. And in a civilization, somewhere you start your history. So we started history from Brahma and his son Manu because he was the first person who influenced so much our civilization. So that's why then his son Manu, then Manu dynasty, then Manu dynasty into two, solar dynasty and uh, lunar dynasty, Surya Chandra dynasty. That initially, Rigvedic period, Puru dynasty existed, Manu and Puru. The Manu uh, became solar dynasty, then the Puru dynasty uh, finally transformed into a lunar dynasty. And all Indians have the uh, tradition, your lineage is from all seven rishis. So this was the reason why we were we have been told that India was India. Uh, it, uh, it has been united by only Britishers because prior to that, India never existed. Maybe you may have a different different uh, people living, but Sanskrit was the pan-Indian language. The way that uh, we, uh, normally we converse in English uh, in very different states. That time, Sanskrit was the only language uh, that used to connect entire India. For and every Indian used to trace their lineage from the Saptarshis. And every king used to uh, trace their um, uh, ancestry from either Solar dynasty or Chandra dynasty, and both actually uh, finally from the Brahman. This was the reason India was also politically one nation, though many kings might have ruled this country. That does not mean that if you have only one dynasty, if, if one dynasty ruled over the entire country, then only you are a politically one nation, that is not there. That is only somebody's personal uh, kind of a perception. Because Indians never ever uh, viewed their kings as outsiders. Though today a particular dynasty is ruled like in the, uh, even we take in North India, sometimes uh, Pratihara, sometimes prior to that Gahad, after that Gahadwala, prior to that even uh, Paramar dynasty, so, so many dynasties ruled. But they are all Indians only. And they all Kshatriya belong to one or only two dynasties. So uh, that's why India was not only culturally one nation, it was also uh, politically also one nation, starting from Afghanistan to till Burma and this is how the Indians migrated from the Burma or uh, Bengal to the southeast uh, countries that's why Ramayana traveled from uh, Burma to Thailand and then Cambodia then Indonesia and uh, the western side Indians started migrating the Asuras first migrated to Persia and some Danavas, uh, they migrated towards Anatolia and the Greek. This is the reason the first settlers of the Greece were the Denons and uh, the Dionysus and this Denons uh, that derived from the Danava. And the Egyptians, they trace their origin from the Persians. So this is how the, how the ancient civilizations evolved from out of India migrations. So that's why India was the cradle of civilization and our antiquity goes back to more than 16,500 years, almost 14,500 BC. So this is the antiquity. Thank you, Reddy Dariyaji, for this wonderful lecture. Actually, the video has been quite engaging the documentary that you showed us. And again, thanks for the detailed analysis and so many information data about Indian astronomy, the cycle of Ubers, and lot many things. Uh, so, we would like to take a few questions and till, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can introduce uh, yourself and uh, Ask the question and please be specific to the topic that has been covered. Yeah. Uh, my name is Harish. My question is that uh, uh, is there a relation between the, the astronomical history, the antiquity that 
we have talked about and the metaphysical uh, evolution that that we see in the Indian scriptures. First of all, what happens when a, uh, various subjects uh, from the Vedic era? Uh, first is the astronomy. Then we have you need a basic mathematics. Then we have an Ayurveda. Then we have the philosophy, the darshana tradition. So the metaphysics is mostly the why we named the creator as a Brahma because he was the first person known to us uh, and uh, suddenly uh, the progenitor uh, even in the Christian world after the Adam was the first human being. So they start only the, uh, from, from the from Adam. So similarly our uh, the civilization history starts from the Brahma. So that's why he then one god philosophy in the Upanishads. <coughs> what happened? Our many historical personalities, we started uh, worshipping them almost equal to God. This is the reason why the polytheism evolved. And it's not anything that like uh, every person we can historically establish. I give even timeline for the uh, Daksha Yajna, means the Shiva were they living at that time even Agastya Rishi. So every uh, historical figure during the Rig Vedic era, they actually existed and um, our philosophy evolved over time. The Upanishads are the foundation of the Indian philosophy. So astronomy, as a, since we are using a continuous civilization is using the calendar and uh, we were very, at that time in the evening, generally they are observing the sky, so they started recording the astronomical observation. But that gives a very, very strong evidence to establish the timeline. So that, what I did, I just arranged them in a chronological order to prove the continuity, calendrical continuity. And naturally, our all uh, the philosophy and numerous, actually it's not the only astronomy, mathematics, uh, even that phonetic uh, script, because Sanskrit can't be evolved without the phonetic script. So we have evolved the phonetic uh, because uh, studying the human voice. Then uh, today, the, in a schools, the energy of the young children we are wasting. Uh, actually, asking them to memorize the spellings. Memorizing spelling is not a knowledge. You are simply wasting your energy. So the rishis wanted a script, so that the way you speak you can write. So this is how the, that phonetic uh, logic has been evolved and uh, without any effort. Any child has only, he has to learn only the 60 or 50, 60 letters, that's all. Then he can write, he need not memorize any spelling of it. Spelling, uh, so that's why they saved the human energy, so that we can uh, uh, um, even uh, uh, our quest for the knowledge should go much much deeper. That was the uh, effort. That's why the generally they interested in the applied science. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the answer. Yes. Uh, please introduce. Please stand and introduce yourself. And Namaste, Mira Nal Prasad. So my question is ki how do we pitch and assert these timelines that you showed to the West? Who question is that ki multiple researches have been done regarding time timelines and different timelines have been asserted by our own Indian researchers. So how do we handle this situation? This is the generally what happened. Uh, you shifted to one particular colony where your neighbor is, you respect him. He started doubting that whether your father is your real father or not. You say, no man, from the childhood onwards, I am seeing him they're living in this house. He is the father or he the, the neighbor has no evidence. So the West has no evidence. They are only doubting Thomas. So we are unduly giving a more uh, uh, credibility to the doubting thoughts. You have to, we have to counter with the various facts. First is our tradition 
and uh, these are the scientific evidences to establish the chronological history as well as the various other corroborative evidences with them. Actually, chronology is a multidisciplinary study. It is not just uh, showing a one particular timeline and this is my timeline. So scientific evidences, you, because it's not the only, we did not uh, ask for a certificate from the West. But even within our country, we have to, in the academia or various other uh, forums, we have to debate and uh, establish the true facts about the crown. And uh, till 17th or 18th century arrival of the Westerners in India, we never ever had any doubt that Ramayana Mahabharata was not a history. You think that Ramayana, because uh, Hanuman depicted as a monkey, how monkey can be a, a construct a setu or he can fly or other thing. What happens in a history? If you see in Ramayana, he is mentioning that uh, Rama, he is actually one hour, he had a conversation with the Hanuman and he says that I am speaking to this guy. He hasn't even mispronounced a single word. It means that he has studied so many Shastras. He is not a monkey. What happened? The Kapi, Kapi Rishi, the descendant of Kapi Rishi came to be known as Kapis. But what happened after Ramayana? Ramayana became a uh, very, very uh, popular subject for the Natakas. In a drama, a poet, what he, uh, he wanted to infuse Adbhuta Rasa. Adbhuta means surprising the audience. If a कोई भी स्टेज में आके बताना पड़ेगी मैं हनुमान हूँ तो फिर वो रसोत पत्ती नहीं होती है ना तो वो कपी है तो उसका चेहरा मंकी वाला फेस कर दिया गया सो जब ऑडियंस को उनका कैरेक्टर आते ही पता चल जाए कि ये कौन सा कैरेक्टर है सो ड्यू टू दिस ड्रामेटाइजेशन एंड एवरीथिंग दिस हिस्टोरिकल पर्सनालिटीज the way the, it has been depicted. Even the, the same similar fight has been mentioned Persian history also. Uh, king of uh, the Persia, he used to travel with the hot air balloon from Persia to Zinzion. Even the Greek history, if you have ever heard about Hellespont in near to the Constantinople, uh, Istanbul ke pas, uh, Greek uh, prince, he was actually the uh, sister and brother, both uh, wanted to escape from an attack. So they used hot air below, they crossed this black sea. So while crossing that hella, the sister was actually uh, looking uh, um, out of the, uh, the, uh, the hot air balloon and she fell down. So that area came to be known as Hellas Pond. Even today it is known as the Hellas Pond. So this uh, hot air balloon travel existed and limited to the one part, but it's not a big uh, technology. Uh, natural silk, India was using natural silk as a very good material to have it for making the balloon. It's uh, nylon not existing. And for uh, the fuel, they used to have a karpura taila word uh, existed that turpentine oil can be used. To, uh, so, and uh, using the height uh, difference you can uh, you can travel in a particular direction also so so these are the things it's not that uh, just uh, since hanuman has been shown as a monkey or even the setu construction was well, it's not anything they have constructed a one flyover uh, on sea during the ramayana period when sea level Presently, the Rama Seturi area is hardly 7 or seven to 10 meter depth, that's all. Around, if you go back to 6000 BCE, Sri Lanka was not an island. It was well connected with the Tamil Nadu. You can easily walk into the Sri Lanka. When sea level started rising in the melt water pulse 3 that occurred around 6200 to 5600 BCE, the only that area was the, that was the highest region. So that also started submerging during the high tide. So what they did, they just filled the land and raised the land level at least a meter or one and a half two meter. That's all. So this was the Ramasetu construction between the uh, Rameshwaram to that Talai Manar to Dhanushpuri. So this was the real history. And again the ten head and these are all dramatization. 
even some poetic exaggerations. So what we need to do, we have to only separate with the Nirakshira Viveka what is actually dramatic and poetic exaggerations and what was the real history. Instead of just, the problem is since we lost the chronology, so we think that everything is a some kind of a story. But I think uh, Sampadananji will be agree with me, there was a, not a, any tradition in, Indi in India, or, uh, we never wrote any fiction in the history. If you are writing a Nataka or Kavya, you must have a very a person having a very good character, uh, means very well known person in the history. It's only Panchatantra and Hitopadesha, where if the person he used the, the fables of using the animals as a character, he explained the, some politics and other. So apart from that, we had we never had any tradition of writing fiction at all. So every text is a historical text, if any legend is a historical legend. So that only if you can uh, establish the timeline, so every legend is the, we can establish the real history also. That what I have done. Even you can uh, download, I, I made uh, um, PDFs freely available on the uh, website. You go to academia.edu, if you are interested in history, then you can download the PDF of my books, I have three or four books are there. Thank you sir. So just a follow-up question on this, about uh, this facts uh, uh, and figures and this knowledge about the astronomy, it is as if now limited to a very close circle or personal efforts of the scholars and this. This is not percolating down to the education system, there are obvious reasons. How do you see so that more and more people become aware of this? Because that, by this only the change will come and there will be more debates and discussion on this. Yeah, this is the reason why we are meeting today. And uh, uh, so we have to, uh, I know, last 200 years we have been uh, asked uh, not to follow your tradition. Uh, nobody uh, made this part of your uh, mainstream of education. Now we have to bring all these issues and even uh, actually what happens the Indology is actually as only uh, historical or some kind of a, you can say uh, a studies uh, but it may not have a, any application in the modern world but it is very very important for the youth to develop that kind of a pride and passion because it, that can't be with the money or getting a big pay package, you will not get that passion and pride. If a youth has to work hard for their nation, means they must have a, a, a pride about their ancestry. We were a Vishwa Guru for more than 10,000 years because we led the world by knowledge. Last 200 years we left behind. This message should go to the youth. Then any field, either doctor, engineer, any field, you will work hard to put your nation in the front line of the entire thing. So this is why Japanese excel due to the passion and pride, not with the money or any position or something. So that is actually the work, Indology or historical or any study the uh, studies about our ancient literature that is very important to generate this passion and pride in the young generations. Yeah, thank you sir. If there are no more questions, we would like to call it today. And thank you sir for your wonderful lecture and so fascinatingly answering all the questions. Thanks to Nila and Saurav for organizing this event and thank you Professor Sampananda Ji for actually bringing sir to here and organizing this wonderful experience. So now we would like to call it a day and by we will end this session with one minute of silence.
Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.